So when I first started trading stocks, options was one of the most confusing things ever for me. And if you're watching this video, I'm sure you're in that same route as I was in. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna be giving a full Weeble options trading tutorial. I'm gonna make it step by step. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible so anyone can learn how to start trading options. And by the way, I'm not just some random guy making this tutorial. I actually trade options. It's one of the ways I pay my bills. It makes me great money. Last month, I ended up making around $8,000. So nothing too crazy, but it's one of the things I actually do to make an income for myself. So that being said, let's go ahead and go into the charts and start this tutorial. All right, so as you can see, we're looking at the S&P 500 ETF. This is mostly what I trade when it comes to options other than Tesla. Um, I like to trade Tesla options as well, but let's just use the S&P 500 for example. So the first thing you wanna do with options is kind of determine, do you wanna day trade it? Do you wanna swing trade it? That's gonna be super important to know kind of the time frame you wanna use, because as you may know, if you don't already, options always have an expiration date. This is one of the reasons why they're more leveraged, right? You're making a bet that the price will go, you know, either up or down, depending on whether you're taking calls or puts based on a certain date. So this is one of the things that makes options amazing for trading is because you can make, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, even 100% in a matter of weeks, days, or even minutes when it comes to day trading, depending on your expiration date. Okay, so let's actually dive into this and I wanna give you some real examples. And then towards the end of this video, I'm gonna be doing a live trade with options to actually show you a real time example because I think that's the best way to learn, especially if you're doing paper trading. So anyways, what we're doing here is we're looking at the SP 500, all right? So let's say that we think the price is going to go down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my phone. I'm gonna go on the Weeble app for options. I think the Weeble app makes it super easy to actually trade options. So let me go in and go on my phone and start explaining the options contracts. All right, as you can see, I have my Weeble account pulled up. If you just go to the very right, I recommend start options with paper trading. So if I just click on paper trading right here, you can see, you know, you can set your account to whatever you want. Obviously this is fake money. So what you can do is you can actually press on options. Now, like I said, the best way to learn something is by actually doing it, right? Watching this tutorials will help, but once you actually do it, that's when it'll really start to click for you. Uh, at least that's what happened to me. So anyways, I'm gonna go and type in SPY, the chart we're just looking at. We're at the options chain, right? So we can see all the expiration dates. Okay, so this is where you have to really determine, are you a day trader or are you a swing trader, right? How long do you think it's gonna take for the price to go from, you know, let's say that 390 level it's at now to maybe your target is 393, okay? Or your target is 400, okay? Whatever it is. So for me personally, I'm more of a day trader. So I hold my trades anywhere from, you know, a few minutes to a few hours. All right, so what I typically trade is the one day expiration. So basically what that means is that options, if we look at the one day, the options contract will expire on January 20th. Today is January 19th. Now, if some people like to trade zero DTE, so this is, it basically expires by the end of the day. And these are way more risky because it's such a low expiration date. It literally expires today. The contracts are a lot cheaper, but they move a lot faster, meaning you know, sometimes, you know, I've traded zero TTs in the past and I've made 100% in a single day or I've lost 100% in a single day. So they're a lot more leveraged. The farther you go out in expiration, usually the more leveraged and the more expensive the contracts will be. So me personally, as a day trader, I like to trade next day's expiration or if it's a Friday, it's going to be next week's expiration specifically for SPY. Okay, so let's say we're gonna trade SPY. I'm gonna click on the one day expiration. As you can see, the first thing I want you to pay attention to is the middle price, right? As you can see, it says stock price 390. That's what the current price of the stock is at, or in this case, the ETF. That's what the current price is. As you can see, it's moving live on the screen. So basically, if you look on the bottom and keep in mind, there's all kinds of filters you can change um, over here if you go on the filters, but anyways, you can change like how many strike prices there's going to be, the expiration dates, all that stuff. Now, if I go back here, as you can see, there's a little button on the bottom right that says puts, okay? If I click on that, I can choose if I wanna see puts, calls, or both, right? So I think the default, if you're just doing this for the first time, you're gonna have both on the screen and you can see the calls and puts. So remember, calls means you're gonna make money when the price goes up. Puts mean you're gonna make money when the price goes down. So in this case, I the 
when I have both put on the screen, it kind of confuses me. So I like to just have one at the time, depending on what I plan on trading that day. So again, let's say we think the price is going up. We're going to click on calls. Awesome. Now, another thing you want to keep in mind is if we look at that strike price again, the 390, as we can see, the farther the price goes out of the money, okay, so we have 391, 392, 393, 394, 395, as you can see, the cheaper the contracts get. And the reason being is because you're making more of a bet that the price gonna, is gonna go all the way up to 395 when the price is at 390, right? So it's a more leveraged contract. The more risky contracts, because keep in mind, $5 on a one day expiration, that's a pretty significant bet. So what I typically do, especially for me as a day trader is I always like to trade one of the contracts, you know, either below or above the actual strike price. So for example, okay, we think the price is going up. Let's say we think the price is going to 393. That's our target. Awesome. Now what I'll do instead of trading the 393 option contract, which is available, what I'll do is I'll trade the 391 contract. That way, you know, there's just less leverage there. It's less risky and the option won't decay as fast. So I'll typically just trade, you know, what's closest to the strike price based on where I think it's going. So for example, it would be 391. Now, once you kind of determine which contract that you want to actually trade, the next thing you want to look at is the bid and the ask. Okay, so you can see the bid and ask. The bid is 135, the ask is 136. So as you can see, it's a super close bid and ask. This is the S&P 500, so there's a lot more liquidity because it's the overall ETF of the market. Some other stocks, like if you trade an individual name, the bid and ask, the spread might be a lot more. So the spread is basically the difference between the bid and the ask. So in this case, the spread is one cent, right? Doesn't make too much of a difference there, but some prices, like maybe it's a lower cap stock that doesn't have as much liquidity, the spread will probably be a lot higher, okay? So just keep that in mind when it comes to actually which stock you're gonna be trading options with. So for example, as you can see, literally the price just went up to 391, right? We should have bought already. The price just went to 391, oh, now it went down. So as you can see, the contracts are moving in live time because now the price just dropped 390. Um, you can see the strike price there, just moved again. So again, let's say we think the price is going to 393. I'm gonna trade somewhere around the strike price. So I'm just gonna click on the 391 contract. As you can see now, this is gonna come up, okay? So we can either buy contracts or sell contracts. So in this case, I wanna buy the contracts. The first thing you're gonna see is the order type. So there's either a limit or you can trade the market. So market basically just means you're gonna get filled no matter what. You're gonna, you know, basically just get filled at the market price um, at the ask. Now, if you want to, you can go to a limit and if you want to buy at a certain price, so maybe it's 167, you can see what the bid and ask are towards the middle of the screen. I'll put an arrow here. So as you can see, it's 167, 166 and 167. So if I put the price at 167, you know, I'll most likely get filled. If I put it to 168, I'll probably, I'll get filled right away. I typically do market, especially when it comes to the S&P 500. Now, if I was trading a lower cap stock or even an individual stock, even Tesla, I might do a limit order just because sometimes you can get screwed over when the order type is on market. You might just get filled at a higher price basically. But typically like more importantly, I'm just trying to get in fast so I don't miss the move, especially when I'm day trading, especially when the market is first opening. So when the market opens at, you know, 6.30 a.m. Pacific time where I live, you know, it's moving super fast, right? So I just want to get filled as fast as I can. So let's go ahead and actually take this trade. Okay, so we think the price is going up. And by the way, based on the chart right now, I wouldn't actually take this trade in real time. We're doing this just for example purposes. I typically don't trade after, you know, one or two hours from the market opening. So if this were real money, I would never actually take this trade. So just want to make that clear. So anyways, let's go ahead and see how many contracts we can buy. So another thing you got to keep in mind when it says 166, right the bid and ask is 166 and 167 and keep in mind you can also refresh this as you can see it just moved because the price of the stock went down a little bit so now the contract is cheaper because we're trading calls okay so now it's 158 159 so basically what that means is you always have to move the decimal point over two times so a one dollar and 58 contract so one contract would cost us 158 dollars so you basically just times it by 100 so again, if I want to buy one contract, as you can see at the bottom, the amount is $159 at the market price. So we're working with a $5,000 account for this paper uh, portfolio. 
So let's see how many contracts we can actually get. We can do 10, that'll be $1,500. So let's go ahead and do 20 contracts. So let me just refresh it again. As you can see, the price just went back up to 157. All right, so let's go ahead and place the order. So as you can see, just place the order and let's see when we get filled. Boom, just got filled. So now we can see we're filled. So now what you can do is you can go back to your portfolio. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way back and we're gonna refresh this. As you can see, so far we're down $20. All right, let's refresh again. As you can see, we're now down $140. Um, again, this is why I wouldn't actually have taken this trade. It's starting to come down now. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait over the next five minutes. We're gonna see what happens, see how much we're up or down. And then from there, I'll show you how to actually sell the contracts, close out the position, and we can go from there. Five minutes later. All right, so we are back and let's go ahead and find out how much money we're down or actually up. So I'm gonna share my screen again. As you can see, we're down around $180. So it has gone down a little bit. As you can see, it's gone down 5% from where we bought it. So obviously again, this trade was not something I would actually take in real life. It's literally the middle of the day. Price action is super choppy. Just wanted to make that full disclosure there. Now, if you're someone that wants to see more of a strategy on how to trade, um, the exact system I use to trade, be sure to watch this video right here. This will explain my strategy when it comes to actually trading, or this video is just more of a tutorial. So anyways, as you can see, I'm gonna refresh again. We're down 100, around 180 bucks. Let's say we're like, okay, the trade's not going in our favor. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. It's important to keep your loser small and your winners big. So we're gonna close this out. We're gonna keep our loser small. So all I can do is I can click on this. As you can see, I can press sell to close. And now this is the same process as actually buying it, right? I can actually sell a limit order or I can sell a market order. So let's just say we want to use the market order. We want to cut the loss right now as soon as possible before the price goes down more. Okay, so now we got 20 contracts and we can just do the same exact thing. As you can see, you know, we just, let's see if we get filled, we just got filled. And if we go back to our tra paper trading portfolio, as we can see, um, it's now down to $4,820. So for the most part, this is pretty much everything you need to know when it comes to trading options on Webull. Those are the main things I look at. Now, one thing I didn't really mention is the Greek symbols when it comes to options. Now, keep in mind, I'm not the best at explaining this, so I'm, I don't dare to try to explain this very in depth, but basically the overall concept of it if you just take away one thing from this, is options decay over time. So basically the closer they get to their expiration date, the more they're going to decay. So for example, I could buy, let's say a contract at 390, right? The price is at 390. And let's say, I think it's going to 391 by tomorrow, okay? So if I trade a one day expiration, so basically the contract will expire by tomorrow. And let's say, you know, the price is at 391. So it actually did what I thought it would do. You know, you would think you would be up on the position because you bought the contract when it was at 390. You bought a call contract for 391. It's tomorrow, right? It's let's say it's, you know, 9.30 AM tomorrow, Eastern time the price opens and we're at 391. Well, actually what would happen is you would probably be break even on the position. You wouldn't be up at all, even though the price went up a dollar. Some of the times you might even be down depending on the Greek symbols, right? I think it's either like theta or delta. One of them will kind of show you how much the price decays every single day. And the main reason why you would be down or break even, even though the price went in your favor is because like I said, the options expire that day because you waited the same day. So if you're if you're planning on taking a swing trade always use you know a farther out expiration or if you plan on taking a day trade this is why zero DTs are very risky if you end up holding them too long what happens is even if the price does go in your favor and it's been a few hours the price decays over time because you're getting closer and closer to that expiration date which for a zero DTE that means it expires by the end of the day or for a one day expiration, it's gonna expire the next day. So if I'm trading a one day expiration, I wanna make sure to close it by that day. I'm not gonna hold it overnight. 
I'm not going to try to swing trade it because of the decay factor. Now, if you want someone who explains the Greek symbols a lot better than I can, I'm going to put a video up on the screen. I'm not affiliated with this video or anything like that. It's not my video. It's someone else's. This is kind of where I learned it from. But if you just take the overall concepts of what I just told you of how it decays over time and how if you're going to swing trade, make sure to use a farther out expiration. Or if you're going to day trade and you're going to do a zero DTA, meaning expires the same day, make sure it's a quick scalp, right? You're holding it for a few minutes. 10 minutes, 15 minutes back. Or if you plan on holding it for let's say an hour or two, making sure it's, you know, next day's expiration or the following day's expiration. That's typically what I do. And it's just going to make it so if the price does go in your favor, whether it's up or down, depending on if you have a call contracts or put contracts, right? The contracts won't decay that much. And if the price does end up going in your favor, you're still going to make a nice profit. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this Weeble options tutorial. I know it's a little bit confusing, but I telling you guys, I watched all kinds of videos. It didn't really click for me until I started actually trading them myself and actually, you know, diving into it. And the best way to do that is through the paper trading option that Weeble has inside their mobile app or even inside the desktop app. So go get familiar with this. Go start trading options and practicing if that's one of your goals for 2023. With that being said, if you'd like to see my strategy on how I actually trade options, not just a tutorial, be sure to download a free copy of my five-step trading guide. This is going to show you the exact system I use to trade profitably. It's going to show you kind of what I'm looking for when it actually comes to taking a trade, exiting a trade, entering a trade, all the stuff you need to know to actually day trade profitably. So anyways, if you want to download a free copy of that guide, all you have to do is click on the first link in the description below, or just go over to this link right here. With that being said, as always, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Trade smart, trade safe, and I will see you in my next video.